slipping like a broke transmission. I got more position. I owe both division. I write poems for commission. I'm the leader for the swallow with the guards in the hard position. It's like you got a hot group and need your contract right. So you got jerks for your publishing last night. And now you want to act tight. Let me get your act right. It don't matter if you're that nice. The bottom line is the kind of mind, not the kind of rhyme. Black Moon, a hip hop group formed in the early 90s, originally featuring Buckshot, 5FT, and DJ Evil D. Today's feature is a group from the 90s that became one of my favorites from the underground scene. Their music is highly respected in that space and one listen to their latest Rise of the Black Moon album released in 2019 will help you understand why. Their lyrical skill as artists that's been around 30 plus years is still flawless in delivery, subject matter and creative originality. Add to that production from their longtime producer DJ Evil D, aged just as well, or even better since making the switch to more lo fi instrumentation. Not too many of today's era know about Black Moon, and even some from their era don't remember how much potential and expectations to be the next to blow from New York they had in the 90s. Their first album is considered an underground classic that while didn't go platinum and create a ship this group could sail comfortably into mainstream household names, it did and does receive grand reviews from album critics and hip hop purists. An argument can be made that Black Moon is the best group from the early 90s that's still together and still rapping in hip hop today, releasing some of their best work as time went on. The early 90s was the birth and the existence of some of the greatest hip hop groups and MCs usually referred to as the golden era of golden eras in hip hop history. The names cannot be argued with in how much they influenced culture and some of your favorite artists that followed in their footsteps. That said, it had to have been competitive coming in at the same time and getting your music not only heard but picked up by a major machine able to do for you what they did for Wu-Tang, Tribe, Mob Deep, Bone Thugs or Fugees. No matter how talented you are, a lot more goes into will you blow up into mainstream artists or not. Elements that have nothing to do with the music. The connections you make, timing, label decisions, age, look, charisma, self-promotion skills, all the above and more have to come together to make a group of artists stand out from the crop long enough to build a loyal fan base that leads into the music industry behind the scenes, giving you that push that's crucial in what's consumed or not. There must be tons of rappers that were talented but never made it from the golden 90s because they didn't have enough of these things and either never rose from the underground or were hot then never heard from again. What happened to Black Moon though? They seem to have it all but never really blew for these reasons. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth Music. Let's get it man. Take a minute to like, subscribe and comment on who I should do next. Black Moon is a hip hop rap group from Brooklyn, New York that consists of 5FT as he's known and DJ Evil D from Bushwick who met each other in high school and formed a rap group together but didn't gain traction until adding third member Buckshot from Brownsville who became the standout rapper in the group known for his witty braggadocious bars of how much better than you he is as an MC. With Evil D as their in-house producer and Five Foot and Buckshot rapping, the formula for success was in place. In 1992, still late teenagers, the group drops what would be their biggest single to date, Who Got The Props, an underground hit where Buckshot took over every verse and kept the hype throughout on Evil D's classic 90s boom bap sound. It peaked at 86 on the Billboard 100 and led to them signing a record deal with the local New York based label Nervous Records. Stunt number one, staying local. 
In my opinion, whether parties involved might admit this or not, Black Moon signing a deal with a local independent startup like Nervous Records without the adequate resources, connections, and cash on hand as bigger labels was a huge reason why they never were seen as mainstream artists. Independent in those days is not what it is today. Nowadays, the right artist that goes independent, has a good team in place, and of course makes great music, can flourish in today's climate. But back then, going independent, almost certified, you'll eventually become known as an underground artist. A word that really means trapped in a space with a very low ceiling and no doors to get out that open from the inside. When Who Got The Props dropped, Black Moon were hip-hop's new and fresh thing. The song was top 100 on the charts, leading to their signing to Nervous, instead of playing it out a little longer to see if they could land a bigger label deal with a much bigger machine. Not taking anything away from Nervous, as they did their best with Black Moon, but they just didn't have enough to compete with the Wu-Tangs and Mob Deeps, Fujis and others blowing up around that time. Nervous Records before Moon didn't even have hip-hop acts on the label. They were mainly house music and used Black Moon to capitalize off the buzz they were building in New York. In 93, they released their debut album that received rave reviews behind another charting single, I Gotcha Open, and Who Got The Props. But soon after the album's release, Nervous's intern Drew Friedman and Buckshot left the group to begin his solo career. They created Duck Down Management, moving on from local independent Nervous to another local independent and stayed stagnant for the next six years because they refused to release their music on Nervous, not happy with their situation. Had they initially weighed out for a bigger label deal, they could have been pushed enough or even force-fed to become stars and would be legends in the game today. Stunt number two, long hiatuses. Another issue with Black Moon that caused them to miss boat after boat was the constant hiatuses they would take throughout their career. Ones in hip hop you may never recover from. The first was due to legal battles with Nervous Records after they decided to leave and start their own thing. From 93 to 99, the only Black Moon release was in 1996, a compilation album of B-side tracks from the group that they never authorized to be released. While a back and forth went on, the group itself had to wait six years before they were cleared to drop their sophomore album. Needless to say, the hip-hop rap landscape had completely changed by then and the 90s boom bap style was getting ready to be shifted and reshaped to fit the modern generation. Taking prolonged breaks is an unwritten element in hip-hop that most times doesn't end in the artist's favor. Unless you're someone who's had mainstream success and has a fan base as loyal as, let's say, Kendrick Lamar. But this was only the first. After their sophomore album release, Album 3 wouldn't come out until four more years later, and their fourth and latest album didn't drop for 16 years. For a group without a mainstream start, label issues leading to prolonged breaks, they had no choice but to become an easily forgotten group in hip-hop. Stunt number 3, Making Hits one lifeline for rap artists in any situation is to focus on the music. Hits are a part of the game. It's what separates a group like Black Moon from a competitive era like the 90s, once you've proven you can make them. But with Black Moon, they didn't have that chart-topping sound to them and became buried under other groups and artists of the era that were making those hit records that played on radio and everyone's boombox in the streets. Black Moon had a few singles here and there, but they were never considered to have what it took to make the conventional hit song, and that made them really fly under the radar. Rappers like to use the phrase keeping it real and take pride in the fact they never had to cross over for the hit song, but in the end, if you ask them, if given the chance, would they work more on their universal presence instead of staying local and keeping it real, they will all choose to have the ability to make a hit. 
I say have the ability because a hit song is not some faucet you can just turn on when needed. Black Moon seemed to almost take pride in being underground and that's fine. Without hit records, they really had no choice. All in all, Black Moon was a dope hip hop group. They managed to stay in the game this long and to me are releasing their best music as of late. They had a shot at becoming familiar voices and faces in hip hop, but for these reasons, their growth was stunted. Salute to Black Moon, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunted Growth Music, and I'm out.